Hi, this is attorney Joe McPeak with Virtuoso Criminal and DUI Lawyers. Today I'm gonna to talk about the uh, crime of brandishing a firearm. Uh, this crime is governed by California Penal Code Section 417, or really by most of California Penal Code uh, 417. I say most because uh, the first subsection of this uh, statute, 417A1, deals with the uh, brandishing or exhibition of a deadly weapon other than a firearm. The remaining subsections deal with different versions of the crime of brandishing a firearm. So California Penal Code subsection 417A2, uh, subsection B, and subsection C all govern uh, the uh, crime of allegedly brandishing a firearm. So first and foremost, what does the government have to actually prove in order to get somebody convicted of brandishing a firearm under section uh, 417? Well, they have to prove across all of these subsections that the defendant drew or exhibited a firearm in the presence of another person, and they did so in a rude, angry, or threatening manner, or otherwise did so in the course of any other fight or quarrel, and that they did so unlawfully, not in self-defense. Now that last part is uh, very intriguing because built into the statute is uh, the fact that the government has to show that the defendant did not act in self-defense. So right out of the gate, the government has to prove to a jury beyond a reasonable doubt that not only the defendant actually uh, used and handled a firearm in a rude, angry, or threatening manner, but that it was not in the course of self-defense. They have to disprove that defense theory out of the gate. You can imagine if some scenarios where maybe somebody, without actually using the gun physically, like shooting it or bludgeoning somebody with it, they maybe go for a gun or start to brandish it in response to somebody who's maybe coming at them. That could be uh, a self-defense case. Uh, alternatively, uh, the theory of fabrication uh, by the complaining witness is also always at play in this type of uh, charge, as it is in many other types of cases. Um, the theory could be that uh, maybe uh, that 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 maybe the people who allegedly see the defendant um, uh, brandishing a gun are either mistaken or flat out lying because they have an agenda. Um, one misconception I'd like to clear up is the idea that if there's no gun recovered to present to the jury that maybe there can't be a brandishing charge. Uh, this is not true. The government is free to prove its case through what we call circumstantial evidence. And uh, if hypothetically a witness or multiple witnesses testify to a jury and they do so credibly or the jury finds them credible that the defendant actually did handle that firearm in a rude, angry, or threatening manner, not in self-defense in other person's presence, uh, you know, the defendant could be found guilty of that offense and be penalized. So it's really important going into this type of case that you and your lawyer, if you're charged with a, a violation of 417, to really scrutinize all the statements and other evidence against you to try to discredit it as much as possible. Uh, sometimes, in some situations, if the gun is recovered, that could support a defense theory of fabrication. If the complaining witness knows the defendant already and knows that they have guns, perhaps the complaining witness is somebody who has an agenda and knows what to say in order to get the defendant in trouble. And uh, if they already have a gun, maybe if they just falsely report the defendant used it, that's the easiest way to get them in trouble if they want to get an upper hand on a relationship or finances or uh, get back at them in some sort of uh, revenge way. All of these theories are at play in the defense of a violation of Penal Code 417. Uh, but I want to discount the idea that if the prosecution has to die just because a gun is not physically recovered. Uh, it's not true. However, uh, of course, if a gun is not recovered, that could be a cause for some jurors to find reasonable doubt as well. If no gun is recovered, then perhaps that supports an inference that the defendant never had a gun in the first place. Again, thorough research and preparation are key to the defense of these cases, especially if they make it to a jury trial. Now, what are the penalties for a violation of California Penal Code Section 417? Well, it depends. Uh, if you're convicted of a uh, if you're convicted of a misdemeanor violation, well, uh, you, could, you could be getting up to one year in the county jail. Uh, and on top of that, uh, all versions carry at least a mandatory minimum of 30 days county jail, which depending on what county you're in, you might actually have to serve an actual in custody time. But there's more. Uh, subsection B involves uh, brandishing a firearm near a daycare center, and subsection C involves brandishing a firearm in the presence of a peace officer. Those versions of brandishing are what you call wobblers. They could be charged as felonies, and if you go down on that charge as a felony, you could be facing up to 16 months, two years, or three years in state prison. Again, really important to have good preparation here when the penalties at stake are so severe. 
If you are charged with a misdemeanor version of the violation only, you could also petition the court for diversion under Penal Code Section 1001.95 uh, and perhaps avoid a conviction altogether with just uh, some sort of programming that the court uh, decides as part of your treatment plan without even having to admit fault. And that could be a great outcome and a way towards uh, dismissal in uh, that type of brandishing case. Talk to your lawyer about whether it's available to you. Mind you, as I maybe alluded to in the other uh, videos about domestic violence uh, defense, uh, if, however, your Penal Code Section 417 case involves the allegation that you brandished the weapon uh, against a close family member or relationship partner, it may be considered a crime of domestic violence and therefore would not be eligible for diversion under Section 1001.95. Again, explore all these options, and with competent representation, you'll be able to do so effectively. Thanks for listening. I hope this was helpful. And uh, please feel free to uh, check us out on our Instagram page, our YouTube channel, or our website. Thanks. Stay safe out there.